Last week, we showed you ang unang lima sa 10 restaurants na nagustuhan namin sa Boracay. In this episode naman, i-reveal na natin ang top 5. Hey there, poor traveler. We are Vince and Yosh. Before we begin, if hindi ka pa subscriber dito sa channel natin, we'll truly appreciate it if i-click mo muna ang subscribe button and the bell icon beside it para lagi kang updated kapag may new travel videos tayo dito. And kung sa FB ka naman nanonood, help us reach 1 million followers so please like and follow our page na rin. Pero Vince, disclaimer muna ulit. We're only covering restaurants that we tried the last three Boracay trips natin within the past year. Kung meron kayo mga favorites na wala dito sa list, it doesn't necessarily mean na ayo namin sa mga yon. Pwedeng hindi pa namin sila na-try or pwedeng na-try na nga namin sila pero matagal-tagal na rin since. And also, alam nyo naman, taste is subjective and pwedeng magkakaiba rin yung circumstances nung visit natin. So okay lang kung hindi tayo pareho ng opinion. Follow our recommendations at your own risk and wag tayo mag-away-away sa comment section na Ang daming dada! O siya, Vince, i-reveal mo na yung top 5. At number 5 ay isa pang well-known gasto pub, ang Lost Indias Bravo sa Station 1. At first glance, it looks more like an inuman paste than kainan. Lalo na when I spotted their beer top wall, flooding out craft beer. But they also whipped out noteworthy grubs. But we chose to start with something Pinoy, Kilawin. Its version uses snapper or mahimay in vinegar, coconut cream, Spanish onions, and chili pepper. I like kinilaw in general. And this one is remarkably tasty and perfectly seasoned, with just the right tang. To sample most of the appetizers, we decided to order its Indios platter, which puts together some of its best-selling fried fare, including croquettes, bitter ballen, chicken goujong, chicken wings, and nachos. May baked oysters din pala. With the exception of the bitter ballen, which was a bit dry, everything was cooked to perfection. They have the crunch outside while remaining soft inside, and we ordered fish and chips too. The snapper was coated in light and airy batter, but still incredibly crispy, served on top of fries and with malt vinegar and tartar sauce. Someone sa group also ordered risotto, but I didn't get to try it. Actually, since mas nag-enjoy ako uminom, very typical pulutan lang talaga yung mga kinain namin dito. And hopefully, makabalik ako soon to try more of what they have to offer. Ang catch lang, medyo may kamahalan lang talaga dito. Isa ito sa priciest na restos dito sa list. Nagahanap ka ba ng Meserap na Mediterranean meal? Try mo dito sa Meserap, sa Station Turen. It's hard to miss kasi it's a three-story building painted all over in bright sunshiny yellow with a spiral staircase and bougainvillea sa facade. It's very inviting. If I didn't know about it before coming here, I would be enticed to enter pa rin. And enter you must! We visited as part of a group and none of their dishes disappointed. None. Its menu is dominated by its selection of medse trays or plates of kebab. You can order 2-4 to four skewers, pwedeng beef, squid, chicken, pork, tofu, wings, veggie, and kofta na combo ng ground beef and pork. Magkaiba ang inorder namin ng teammate kong si Asta ng ganito friend but every single steak was perfectly grilled, seasoned, and packed with flavor made even more vibrant by the esme salsa, mediterranean slaw, and pickled cucumber, onions, and chilies. You can choose kung anong carbs ang gusto mo, buttered rice or flatbread. Another something we could write home about was this sinful grilled pork belly, which is so soft and tender, it easily breaks down without much effort. It's served with turmeric rice, grilled veggies, and amba barbecue sauce. It's a very generous dish both in quantity and flavor. Pati yung kanilang eggplant hummus and calamar, meze wrap naman talaga. In our previous video where we tackled pocket-friendly food spots, we mentioned Bon Bon. Dahil sister restaurant siya ng Meserap and magkatabi lang sila, you can actually order Bon Bon dishes from here. So if you suddenly have East Asian cravings in the middle of a kebab fest, you can just go for it. Tapos sila na bahalang magdala nung in-order nyo sa Bon Bon dito sa Meserap. O ba? Two in one. The Meserap prices na pinakita namin sa screen ay as of October last year pa. But it seems like nagtaas na sila. Ito na yung mga presyo ng mga na-feature naming dishes as of April 2023. 
it's kind of expected na magtaas given that the cost of ingredients probably increased too because of inflation. We could definitely exclaim it's worth it at the price point nung natry namin ito last year. But I'm not sure ngayon if I could still recommend it sa current na presyo nila. I guess kailangan lang namin bumalik, try it again, and decide for ourselves kung worth it pa rin para sa amin. Sitting pretty at number 3 is Noni's. This is another restaurant by Patrick and Shreya Florencio. The same minds behind Little Taj. And super excited naman ako itry to kasi si Yosh sings high praises about this place. Located to sa Station X, a dining complex malapit sa edge ng Station 2 and Station 3. Noni's tagline and promise is eat good, feel good. So they make their own bread, marinade, and sauces from scratch. And they have a lot of tempting items sa menu. For appetizers, we had the sticky pork ribs na marinated in pineapple juice and spices and then slow-cooked, topped with spring onions and sesame seeds, and served with mango salad on the side. The first thing we noticed was the size of it. We were told na it was good for two, so we were surprised na ang laki niya. Na syempre, ikinatuwa namin. But it could really pass as a main dish instead na appetizer. It was tender but not fall of the bone tender. It was so tasty but the alat was not too overpowering. The mango tomato salsa adds tang and brightness to the dish. The second appetizer we ordered was the empanada. Filled with shiitake mushrooms and buffalo cheese. This was the only dish that disappointed sa meal namin to be honest. None of the ingredients left a mark. Yung spicy yogurt dip yung nagdala. Four pieces to, pero hindi namin naubos. For the main course, I had beef and kimchi. Ito I like. Perfect combination to ng fermented na taste ng homemade kimchi nila and ng umami ng braised beef brisket. And the sorghum grains allowed them to shine, which I don't think would happen if rice or potato yung carbs na kasama. It adds texture too. Yes, and hindi siya dry combination, thanks to the perfect soft-boiled egg that also pulled everything together into a solid dish. Kapag pinagsama-sama mo lahat ng components in one spoonful, this is a very, very balanced dish. Ako naman, I ordered bistek Tagalog. Yes, bistek yan, hindi burger steak. And although hindi halata sa videos, it's a massive piece of meat. Yun naman ang gusto ko rin dito sa nonis. Oo, above average ang presyo, pero talaga namang malaki ang serving. It sat on top of kamote mash and the beef was incredibly tender. Slow cooked for 36 hours ba naman. But the crispy onion rings added some texture. Because the bistec sauce was not shy sa alat, sa first bite ko, I was looking for some acidity. But the zesty salad on the side promptly provides naman. It's also sprinkled with kasong puti, adding just a bit of creaminess to the sauce. On a previous trip, umorder din ako ng chicken and pork adobo. Like yung bistec, modern and deconstructive din ang take nila dito kasi each component was individually prepared. The chicken was grilled, the 72-hour pork belly naman was fried, and with a soft-boiled egg din. The protein sat on top of organic black rice, partially dipped sa Cavite-style adobo sauce. It's a medley of Pinoy flavors, the adobo sauce, the smokiness of the grilled chicken, and the garlicky punch all work together. May up to 15% discount din available dito sa Nonis kung mag-avail ka ng voucher nila sa Cloak. Check na lang ulit sa description ng video na to. Ang ating first runner-up ay ang Dos Mestizos! Institution na to sa isla. But I have to warn you ngayon pa lang na this isn't very budget-friendly. Not at all. But it is, in my opinion, worth it. This isn't my first time here and consistent naman ang dining experience ko. It serves some of the best Filipino-Spanish dishes I've tried not just in Boracay, but in the country. They're best known sa kanilang paella, pero hindi naman namin kayang ubusin yun ng kaming dalawa lang. We kick off the meal with tapas, starting with pate de pollo, which is duck fat sealed with chicken liver pate. I'm not a big fan of chicken liver. But to my surprise, I didn't mind this at all. I actually quite enjoyed it. But Yosh, bilang soccer for Atay, was having a field day. Siyempre naman, it was creamy and somewhat earthy and not irony at all. Halos mabusog na ako sa tinapay dito pa lang. 
Sabi ko sa inyo, mahilig talaga ako sa atay. Aswang yarn. Very creamy rin ang kanilang croquetas de jamon, which is a plate of three bechamel croquettes na may bits of jamon serrano inside. Last appetizer naman namin ang kanilang homemade chorizo na sinadjust sa amin ni ate server. These little feisty slices packed a punch. Ang di ko lang masyadong bet is may mga parts yung sausage that felt a bit gritty or grainy and it could use a bit more fat. So best to eat it with diced potatoes and yung cloves of garlic na kasama to temper it. For the main course, we had roasted half chicken served with potato medallions and a whole bulb of garlic. This is what chicken is supposed to taste like. It's super moist inside and the marinade seeped through, made even tastier by the spice rub sa skin. The best chicken that I had sa trip na to. Hindi rin naman papatalo ang kanilang herb-crusted pork chop served with vegetables and potato puree. It was so juicy and flavorful. Hindi na namin kinilangan yung dip. Our only comment lang is that most of the items we ordered were very oily. Which is something na lagi naman namin napapansin sa most Spanish restos. Kahit na nung nasa Spain kami. So you might crave something else after to cleanse your palate and wash it all down. But we really did have a fab time dito sa Dos Mestizos. And we'd return kapag mas may budget na ulit. Hehe. <laughs> so that's Dos Mestizos sa second place. And at number one, ang napili namin ay ang... I must admit, kahit kami ay surprised na ito ang number one sa amin. It's not usually included sa list of top restos in the island. And hindi rin kami unanimous dito. Hindi kami palaging pareho ng taste and preferences. Pero when we rank our faves individually, it turned out na parehong nasa top to namin to. And when combined... Siya yung lumabas na number one. Pig Out Bistro is Pinoy-owned and located along the main road. Sa May Johnny's. Maliit lang ang lugar, parang hole-in-the-wall type lang. Most rave reviews mention its seafood offerings, lalo na yung crab burger. But as always, we asked for recommendations from the staff who pointed at the other burgers, so we ended up with the mushroom and bacon burger. Hindi halata sa video pero sobrang laki ng burger na to. Hindi kayang kagatin kahit gaano pakalaki ang bibig mo. Lalo na yung US chuck patty nito. Sobrang kapal. And dahil share kami ni Yosh, we cut it in half. And nag yung juice ng karne. It's complemented by black garlic and truffle compound butter and homemade bacon which added smokiness pero konti lang. It also has horseradish mayo and pickles that added a little kick. Me fries din sa side. Another staff recommendation was the smoked 40-hour sous vide lechon belly. Hindi siya lechon na roasted ha. Think of it as parang lechon kawali, pero sous vide. Bihira lang ako makatry ng anything sous vide and ibang level talaga ang lambot. Nasa sour side ang marinade nito, which I like. Visually, the scallion puree and grilled leeks added a splash of green, while the sukang pinakurat put a yellow-orange accent. Speaking of, the puree didn't really do anything to the dish other than color, but the vinegar elevated it. Pumingi pa nga ako ng additional vinegar eh. It's crowned with a medium piece of crispy pork skin. Dahil seafood nga yung crowd favorite dito, we also tried its gnocchi with smoked salmon. Hindi ako mahilig sa gnocchi, but... Pig Out's version didn't really feel too heavy, with the right fluff and chewiness. Each piece had ricotta and was topped with a thick slice of salmon na smoked using santol wood and drizzled with balsamic sauce. Overall, every single dish we ordered was immaculate. But what set it apart from many other restos dito sa list was the service. Our server Cha was very attentive and friendly and she promptly informed us again that for most dishes, it would take around 30 minutes to prepare. So, we knew early on that we had to wait quite a bit. And Josh, sa buong stay natin sa Boracay nitong huling trip natin, Cha was the only one who explained each and every dish to us after placing it on the table. Na na-appreciate talaga natin. It's little thoughtful things like this that makes us want to return. And return we shall! Sa next Boracay trip, irang kulit natin yung mga naging favorites natin. In the meantime, kung hindi ka pa nakasubscribe dito, please take the time to do just that and ring the bell na rin para lagi kang updated whenever we upload new episodes. And kung sa FB ka nanonood, 
pa-like and follow nyo na rin tong page natin. Kung may tanong, comment lang kayo below or message us on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. Just look for at the poor traveler single L. And kung may Spotify account ka, follow mo rin ang The Poor Traveler Podcast for more travel-related chikahan. That's all for now. Remember, plan smart, travel safe, and make every trip worth it!